Have you ever looked at the back of a bag of store-bought potatoes and noticed that it says not for planting? Is the warning real or is it just a scam from Big Potato to stop you from growing your own food and putting them out of business? You might think that we plant potatoes in the ground and that grows more potatoes, but that's not exactly true. And if potatoes are all just grown from each other, why are seed potatoes from nurseries so much more expensive? And in order to answer these questions, we get to unpack one of the most fascinating stories of modern food production. Play some music. If you're a home gardener, you probably already know that if you plant a potato in the ground, it will sprout into a plant that produces more potatoes. Over generations and generations of planting, growing, replanting, and regrowing, potatoes slowly deteriorate their ability to hold up disease, and you start to expose yourself to the risk of potato blight, which is a soil disease. It's essentially a mold that will kill all of your potatoes, disease your soil, and then be around for two to three years, killing any of the potato or tomato plants that it's in your soil. It's a big deal. So in the modern world, how have we developed something that prevents this? Well, here's where it gets interesting. The potatoes that you get in store actually had great, 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 great grandparents that started life being grown in a laboratory. So to answer the first question, if you take a supermarket potato and plant it, will it grow more potatoes? Have they been treated or something to stop you from doing that? They will actually sprout and you will get more potatoes from them, but there's a big but there. To understand why it might not be a good idea, we've got to understand where potatoes come from where they really come from. There are businesses whose entire purpose is they're a lab that will take disease-free and disease-resistant tissue from potatoes, from those tissue samples, grow them on a sterilized substrate until they turn into a potato plant that eventually produces a singular mini tuber. These mini tubers are about an inch big and weigh one to one and a half grams. Unlike the rest of potato production where potatoes are bought and sold per ton, these mini tubers are sold per tuber, per individual plant and they can cost upwards of hundreds of dollars. Farmers will then buy these mini tubers from potato production laboratories, hand plant them, and then grow them into a potato plant that will then produce anywhere from eight to 12, even more potatoes. When you harvest these potatoes, you now have what's called your first generation, generation one of potatoes. These are then not sold. Farmers would never take a profit. You will take all of these, plant them, grow them again, the, potato, the potatoes that those produce will be called your generation two and so on. You go through generation two, three, four, five, six, and then what ends up in your supermarket is generally the seventh generation. The standard for potatoes that you end up buying in a supermarket are seven generations old. That might not sound like much, but what that does mean is that a single mini tuber has turned into nearly 20 million potatoes. And in fact, in here is a small detail that I find particularly fascinating. There are farms and farmers where their entire production life cycle are to buy mini tubers, farm them for two to five generations, and then sell those potatoes, those seed potatoes, to other farmers who will then finish off production and then farm the potatoes that end up on your kitchen table. The reason that I know this is one of the places that I help fact check this video are actually farmers that take those lab grown seed potatoes grow them until their fourth generation and then sell those on to those end generation potato farmers. Why do they stop at seven? The seventh generation is a sweet spot that you hit when you can grow the most amount of potatoes before you're running into issues with yield, taste, and most importantly, disease resistance. Which is where we get the issues that you can run into with growing supermarket potatoes. You can, yes, take them, plant them in the ground and they will produce more potatoes. But by this point, the potatoes that you're getting out will be an eighth or even ninth generation, which is where you're starting to significantly increase your risk of running into something like potato blight. Well then, if you're into gardening, you've probably come across certified seed potatoes. Where do they fit into this? Certified seed potatoes, depending on where they're sourced from, tend to be generations four and five, which means that in the home garden, you can get a good four or five growing years before you should consider swapping those out for more nursery bought potatoes. So what does this actually mean for the home gardener? This means that if you want to give potato growing a go and you don't want to buy certified seed potatoes, you can plant supermarket potatoes in your garden, but I wouldn't do for more than one yield. Once I get those potatoes out of the ground, I'm not planting those again to grow more. I'm just eating those and I'm starting again with preferably proper seed potatoes. And what this means for me personally is I am growing sebagos here. These are the second generation that I've grown from that nursery stock, which means that these are gonna be sixth or seventh generation, which brings me to a really good point that when you're buying potatoes from a supermarket, you have no idea what generation they are. 
you could potentially be in a part in the world where they might need to stretch those margins further and they're even bringing it into seventh, eighth, ninth generation potatoes that are finally landing there. Or you could have hobby farmers in the area producing some of this supply that don't actually know about this. And if you found this interesting or helpful, please make sure to subscribe. If you have more questions about this, please drop them in the comments. We'll be happy to follow up. Please give me a thumbs up or comment. They really help the video grow in the algorithm. Thank you.